You know, Clackamas County has more farmers markets than any county in the state. And so I've decided to go on my own little road trips to various farmers markets, buy fresh produce, and use family recipes to show folks how to make delicious, wonderful food from our own farmers markets locally with recipes from my family. And I'm very proud to tell you that uh, today, uh, I am going to be featuring eggplant parmesan, which was uh, how I was taught to make this was by my three, my grandmother and my two aunts, my grandmother Principia Torello, my aunt Michalina, and my aunt Anna. So what you'll see here today is fresh produce from Lake Oswego's Farmers Market this week and Fiala Family Farms in the Stafford area. So I bought the produce, visited folks, uh, went and talked to the vendors who sold me these, these beautiful these beautiful products and the beautiful produce and today we're going to learn how to make authentic southern Italian eggplant parm. So to get started I'm first going to show you some of my lovely lovely finds here and this, this is a Roma tomato. I personally like to use Romas because they're a nice meaty tomato and they really, really roast well. And one of the things you'll see in this recipe is roasted tomatoes. So let me go ahead and cut. And you can see it's pretty simple. It's just cutting them in half. And occasionally taking a little bit of the top off if it's a little dark. There you go, kind of doing that. Oh, and by the way, this is actually a tomato knife, and I wouldn't uh, leave home without one, quite frankly. It's one of the best uh, pieces of kit kitchen equipment that I own. So let's finish the last few tomatoes. Here we go. And we're going to line them up, and we're going to get them ready to go. Now, there are a few other things that you have to get ready, and I'm going to show you. I have already have some things prepped in front of me, which I'll go through. But I wanted to show you what I put, help put on the tomatoes, and show you how to prep it. And I have a little bit of fresh basil. This actually is not from the farmer's market. This one is actually from my own little garden, because there is no Italian that doesn't want to have fresh basil in their own garden. And plus, some of my own fresh oregano from uh, my little plant in the backyard. And uh, it smells, if you could be here, you can't smell it when you're watching TV, but it smells absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to take the basil. I'm going to show you a little trick on how we prepped the basil because it's very simple. And uh, a friend of mine who was also Italian kind of taught me this particular trick. And you take the basil leaves and you pretty much tear them off of the plant. Okay, we've got, we've got a few here. And then what you do is take them and you simply grab leaves and you kind of place them on top of each other. You can see this, how I'm doing that, just so. And then you just take them and you roll them up into like a little bed pillow. Here, here's your little basil pillow right here. <laughs> Then you just take your, your knife. I'm going to use my, another one of my favorite knives that I love to chop with. And you just chop. So it's a real easy sequence. And then if you want to chop some more, there. You just kind of give it a few more little, little chops. And that gives you some nice fresh basil. Now I'm just going to do the same thing with oregano. Very easy. I, with my fingers, I just pull the leaves off. There you go. Mmm, boy, I love the smell of fresh oregano. There's nothing like it. I, sometimes I don't know what I like better, whether I like basil or oregano better. It's a toss-up. So here we go. So I got a little bit of oregano, and this is what it looks like, as you can see. Ah, oh, heaven. And I'm just going to take my chopping knife again, and I'm just going to kind of quickly just, just kind of get it a little chopped up. It doesn't have to be finely chopped up. These recipes work. If you kind of coarsely just get it, just get it chopped up enough. And then we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the bowl. So that is essentially how you prep the herbs for the dish we're about to make. There is no Italian dish for me that I can make unless it has garlic in it. So I do have a head here and I'm just going to show you quickly how I prep garlic. So I've got a clove here. And what I'm going to do first is peel the clove. If you can see this, I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off at the top there. 
and I'm going to peel it. Peel it. Here we go. It's a little tedious to peel garlic, but I actually find it relaxing, believe it or not, because you just kind of have to slow down and get that peel off. And here you go. And then you take your garlic and you do the same thing. I take my other knife and I just chop it up. There we go. Just kind of get it all kind of on the side. You want it, like I said, it doesn't have to be super fine, but I like it. I like mine a little chunky, but if you want yours a little finer, you can just keep, you can just keep chopping away. So we have all of our ingredients. So now I'm going to show you how I put together the tomatoes. In front of me, we have our chopped fresh basil and oregano. We have chopped fresh garlic. I have a little bit of pepper in front of me. I have, okay, this is my secret sauce, folks. This is my Italian spice. You can find this in Italian specialty so stores. I didn't find this one at the farmer's market, but it's got all kinds of different little peppers in it and herbs as well, and it's dried, and it is directly from Italy. So you can find it in Portland if you go to an Italian specialty store. And then I have a, a little bit of garlic salt, if you can see that. Here we go. And then just for a little more bite, because I like to have a little bite, a little hotness in my sauces, I have a little bit of pepperoncini. So this is a very easy recipe to put together. So tomatoes are laid out, all ready to go. So we're going to take our olive oil. And I do this by sight and by feel, because that's how Italians cook sometimes, OK? So if you watch and see what I do, I'm going to take the olive oil. OK, and I'm going to dribble it all over the tomatoes. Just kind of get it nice and coated, if you can see that. Oop, there's one in the middle that didn't quite get it. Now, this is wonderful olive oil from one of our local uh, uh, vendors here, too, Sur La Table. It's inexpensive, but it has a lovely flavor. And it works with everything from prepping tomatoes to make it salad dressing. So here you go. There's my tip on olive oils. So the next thing we really want to do with the tomatoes is we want to dress them a little bit. We want to put, want to put some beautiful spices on them, a little bit of salt and pepper to prime them to be roasted in the oven. So the first thing I do, I take my garlic salt. And this is just garlic salt. And you can see I'm not, I'm not sprinkling a lot, but I'm just taking it and I'm sprinkling a little bit on each tomato. Here you go. There we go. Ah. Then I'm going to do a little bit of pepper. Pretty basic, right? Salt and pepper. And you just kind of sprinkle it on. Fresh from the market. These are going to be gorgeous when they're finally cooked. OK, a little bit of my secret. I put a little bit of pepperoncini. Now, not too much. If you don't like it too hot, you just toss a little bit here just to add a little bit of heat. And OK, now we're going to take our fresh herbs, and this is a mixture of basil, and it's a mixture of oregano. And we're going to just kind of toss it on top of the tomatoes, if you can see what I'm doing here. Mm, this will be nice and toasty, and it will infuse these tomatoes with a gorgeous herbal flavor, which is what you want for a, a robust dish like an eggplant parm. And use it all up. The more, the merrier. Here we go. Here's a little bit of chopped garlic. There you go. Oh, and you can really smell the garlic. And again, you can use as much or as little as you like. I mean, these are very strong flavors. Uh, these kinds of tomatoes, romas, can really um, take, you know, because they're such a meaty tomato, they, they can actually take uh, a lot of these more robust herbs, and it can become uh, very, very flavorful without overwhelming the tomato taste. So here we go. All right. so. We put all our ingredients on top. I'm going to just do one last little glug. That's a very professional chef term, by the way, a glug. <laughs> I need glug of olive oil. Kind of get, make sure that's all coated. And now our tomatoes are ready to be roasted in the oven at 400 for anywhere between 20 minutes and a half hour. And you'll see me kind of go in and check on them, make sure that they're cooking down. Because what we really want to have with these tomatoes is, is to have it be like a rich tomato jam with all these fresh herbs in it. And it will be outstanding. So with that, let's get these lovely tomatoes in the oven. 
I use convection bake, but you don't have to. You can actually put it on bake as well. Uh, sometimes convection bake makes it go a little bit quicker for you and gives them a little bit of a nice browner kind of a crust. Now we're going to actually prepare the eggplant. Uh, as you know, the tomatoes are roasting in the oven. So again, this is uh, easier than, a, than, than people think, and they always, often wondered what to do with eggplants. Well, I am gonna show you how to make an eggplant so delicious that you will be eating them regularly as part of your diet. So this is from Fiala Farms. Actually, it's their eggplant, and I'm just gonna take off the little bit of the tip here. Now, I actually peel my eggplant. Some folks don't peel their eggplant, but I think it gives it a better texture to kind of just get some of that, that skin off. There we go. And I like this kind of a peeler because it's easier to manage the eggplant for me. And you can see that it really leaves quite a bit of the eggplant left. It just gets that outer skin off. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. So the eggplant moves from this <laughs> to this. Once again, I'm gonna use my larger knife to do this. I love this knife, not the tomato knife. And I'm just gonna simply do this. We're just gonna cut it kind of in, kind of in circles, as you can see, okay? And we're just gonna go through and cut the whole thing up here. And you want them, um, you know, some, some are thicker than others. Don't worry about that. It all cooks down. This is a lovely eggplant, fresh from the farm. And sometimes to make it easier, this last little bit, I'll start from the other side and just try and finish it up. So we take one medallion. And the egg wash is very easy to make. I usually use four eggs and I just put a little bit of half and half in it just to kind of give it a little bit of richness. So as you can see, I'm really coating it with the egg wash and then I go right over to the breadcrumbs. Now these are Progresso breadcrumbs and these are the breadcrumbs my family always used when they were making eggplant parmesan. So you take your medallion, you see how nicely coated that is? And you just take it here and you have a bowl ready because you want to bring that over to get them sauteed. All right, so here we go. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that rich egg color. Oh, look at these wonderful Progresso breadcrumbs and it's just coating it really nicely. Here we go, another one. We're gonna start with a few and then I'll show you how to saute them. Here we go. Here we go with this. All right, there we go. And yes, your fingers get a little sticky, but that's the fun of working with eggplant in an egg wash. Just checking our tomatoes. Just kind of checking them, making sure how they're doing. They're starting to get, they're starting to get much more, um, yeah, they're starting to look really nice, you guys. I just have to tell you, that is really good. Let's close this puppy up again, here we go. Oh, all right. So now let's get this oil started. So the oil is getting hot right now. And how much oil do you put in? I just coat the bottom of the pan. You don't have to put a lot in. You just kind of want to make sure that it gets nice and hot and shimmery so you can really get a nice toasty uh, kind of feel to your, uh, to your eggplant here. So I'm going to take a piece of eggplant. Here we go. There we go, and I'm going to let it heat up just a tad more. Here we go. Just to get that going. Just want to put in one to test it, make sure it's hot enough. Let's see how we're doing here. Ah, yeah. It's doing fine. It is starting. Here we go. So, and I like to use tongs when I, when I do this with eggplant. It's much easier to get it in, much easier to get it out. So, there we go. We're gonna have four, four at a time, fit in this pan. So we're just gonna let it, let it saute now for a few minutes on one side and then I'll flip it over. Mm, and the olive oil uh, is just lovely. I like to use it. Another tip is if you can't find olive oil, you can also use canola oil. So, but if, if you can get olive oil, it's the best oil to use. I think it's the healthiest, it's the best. 
and it really makes it have an Italian flavor. And you can see how it's starting to brown. Those nice medallions. Here we go. I'm gonna let them brown up a little bit more. That oil is just getting hot enough to put a nice crust on them. Oh, it smells absolutely delightful. These are gonna be perfect. They're gonna be a beautiful golden brown. Mm -hmm. My mouth is starting to water already. And I'm just kind of making sure they get browned on both sides. Because it also cooks the eggplant through, so the eggplant itself becomes just a nicely cooked vegetable with that nice crisp crust on the outside. There we go. This is a fabulous pan because it does the uh, eggplant evenly. Oh, look at how golden that's getting. Mmm, that egg crust is really starting to, and the breadcrumb is really starting to get nice and golden. I'm going to start taking them out, and you can see how nice and golden they are. That's just a nice spot for them to be in. Just kind of check them a little more. Oh, yeah. get them with my tongs and I just stick them on the paper here where you let a little bit, a oh, cookie sheet works again, but you usually, I usually put a few paper towels just to soak up the extra oil. And here you go. Here we go. All right. In order to make the Parmesan, this is how we do it. We basically are going to put tomato sauce on the bottom of the pan and I'll show you that in a moment. We will layer the eggplant. We will put our nice, jammy, roasted tomatoes. They took about an hour to cook in the oven at 400. They're nice and jammy, and they are all uh, have herbs in them. It looks absolutely delicious. We're going to put that on top of the eggplant. And finally, with a, then we're going to take some of our cheeses. I have two, ki two kinds of cheese here, Parmesan cheese, and then kind of a mixed Romano cheese and then we're going to top it with our mozzarella cheese. So easy peasy, you're gonna love this, it's easy to do. The last surprise is a tiny bit of parsley that I'll put on top before we cook it. So let's get started and pull our eggplant parm together. And what you really wanna do is to coat the bottom of the pan, like so, with some nice red sauce. Here we go, see it's just fresh, it's light, it's just pretty much tomatoes that are ground up. You can really use any tomato sauce to line this. I happen to like Nicoletta's because it's so fresh and because it's a local product, again, a local uh, vendor, a local restaurant that I can help support. So I'm just gonna take this red sauce and I'm pretty much going to just kind of spread it along the bottom of the, of the uh, pan. And the reason I do this is because that really helps the eggplant not to stick to the bottom of the plant. It kind of gets it in this nice little nest of fresh tomato sauce. So the next piece is this. We take our beautiful eggplant that's been sauteed golden brown and we start layering it on top of the tomato sauce. And you can have fun with this. You don't have to have one size in all the places. You just kind of want to layer it on the bottom of the pan Oh, look at how oh, this is. This one has done very well, everybody. This is just a beautiful golden brown. Perfect. And we're going to keep layering it on the bottom of the pan. Here we go. And you can see we have some of our crispy crumbs in here. That's okay. That actually adds flavor. It adds a little crunch. It gives it a nice texture. I always like to kind of put a little bit of it on top to make sure that it really has that crunchy goodness. And as you can see, I have filled up the bottom of the, can, the pan. I still have a few eggplant left. Um, so you can either eat these as an appetizer or you can do what I'm doing right now and just continue layering them because they will cook and bake nicely in the oven. So here's the last of it. And we have some little funny pieces here. Just stick those in the corners. Help soak up some of that tomato sauce. Mm -mm, good, look at this. Wow, this is absolutely Fantastic, so now what I'm gonna do again, I have a little bit of the crispy crumbs. I hate to waste them because I just think they add so much goodness and so much flavor to the dish. Now this is where the fun comes in. Remember those roasted tomatoes? 
well, we really have literally made tomato jam. Roasting tomatoes like this brings out their flavor, brings out their color. And the other good thing about this dish, you can actually take the tomatoes and use them by themselves as an appetizer too. If you get a nice crisp, crispy loaf of bread and you cut it into slices and you put these out, people oftentimes like to go ahead and put a little piece on bread, maybe put a little, little, a little bit of uh, cheese on it and it becomes a great appetizer. But today, we're gonna use them in the Parmesan. So, I take these beautiful jammy tomatoes and there's about, oh, 24 or more halves in here. And we're just going to take them and put them all over the top here. And you can see how nice and roasted and how they're like, as I said, it's like a beautiful, red, delicious tomato jam. And it just rests nicely on top of, the, on top of this gorgeous, this gorgeous eggplant that we're pulling together. So here we go. All right here, and you're just going to kind of put them there, and you're going to let that jammy goodness just kind of kind of start soaking into it. You can kind of press down the tomato a little bit, get some of those juices out. Oh, here we go. Not too difficult. You can see there's some nice chunks of garlic in there, so this is a great dish for garlic lovers. And those herbs have roasted right into the tomatoes. Just beautiful. And you've got a lot of, like I said, nice little crispy critters here, too, that if you want to just, you know, put a little bit of that in there to add a little bit of flavor. I do. And here we go. Here goes my reach to the rest of the tomatoes. Let's just get those up. And you notice, as I said earlier, I put the aluminum foil down, largely, because it's easy cleanup for you. Because you want the tomatoes to kind of get a little crispy, too, and kind of get that kind of get that texture and you know oftentimes I'll take a little bit of this up it's got a little bit of garlic and herbs on it and you can just kind of take it and sprinkle it on so so we're almost done okay now we're going to put on our two cheeses I like uh, grated parmesan and you can actually find this at any store as well you can find it at Fred Meyers you can find it at Zupans you can find it at Safeway you can also <clears throat> buy your own Parmesan and grate it yourself. Um, I didn't do it for this show, but maybe in a different show I'll actually show you how I grate my own Parmesan cheese, so let's do that. And this is kind of a three cheese mi mixture with Romano in it. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna sprinkle that on top. And, and you can tell, I just see what it looks like. You know, this is a very visual dish with all the colors, all the herbs. And I think that's looking, I think that's looking pretty good. So now we have it layered. We have tomato sauce, we have eggplant, okay? We have roasted tomatoes. And the final act is the mozzarella cheese. There we go. Now I buy this, again, fresh at any of our local grocery stores. News is you can actually buy it pre-sliced, um, and years ago they didn't have it mozzarella like this. Uh, now we really get nice, fresh, real mozzarella. It's pre-sliced. It takes a little bit of the time off, so I'm not actually slicing the cheese. And uh, I find it to be a really big time saver, and it doesn't sacrifice flavor or freshness, which is important to this kind of a dish. Here we go. And you're just going to take the cheese, and you're going to just kind of... Here we go. Kind of place it on top of those beautiful roasted tomatoes with all their flavor, all their color, um, a layer of all that other cheese. Here we go. Got a few little bit more, so we're gonna try and just kind of fill in the corners a little bit. And now, the last thing I'm going to do that makes it look very pretty, I have a little bit of chopped parsley here. We take the parsley and there's your beautiful dish. It's got red, it's got green, it's got white, it's colorful, it's gorgeous. And I can guarantee that when your guests dig into this, this will be a meal that they won't forget. And my Nana would be very proud of me. Hey Nana, this one's for you. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Oh wow. 
I have to tell you, isn't this just gorgeous? So you can see the cheese has melted on top. Uh, and you can see on the inside, sometimes you'll see it bubbling a little bit, which is another clue that it's done. So I'm ready. I'm ready to see, do a taste test right now, everyone. So let's do that. Okay. It's a little hot, so I'm going to use my, use my mitt here. Let's see how this cuts. Oh, I can just feel the meatiness of those tomatoes. How nicely it's set up. Here we go. I'm just going to cut. I like a corner piece because it's a little crispier, actually. All right, so let's try a taste of this. I'm going to move my plate over. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? See how it all, all stays together? Let's take a taste. Ooh, I'm excited to do this. This looks fantastic. Oh, I've got some of that jammy tomato and that delicious eggplant. Mmm. Oh. Delicious, magnifique. And the other thing I would suggest is this. I would suggest serving this with a nice green salad. And we'll get into salads as the show goes on. Uh, maybe a little bit of red wine and a nice big loaf of crusty bread and you have a beautiful Italian homemade dinner. So with that, we are done. And I'd like to encourage everyone to shop local, shop healthy, and be well. <laughs>